And welcome back to day 10. We're in the end of Act 2, going into Act 3. And we go start off with Niv Mizzet Reborn, who was admittedly leaked like near the beginning of the spoiler season, but I didn't cover him because that's not fair. Uh, and he's part of the third act of the story. So, right off the bat, I want to say something at, at first. The way they spoiled Niv... I... Look, I get that I'm really enjoying the story beat flavor season we're getting right now. Our flavor story beat spoiler season right now, preview season. But they basically opened it as a like, last time we left him, Bolas had killed him. What card did we get depicting that? When was that said? What, when, whoever said that? So I'm I'm a little I'm not quite in the same camp because I'm sure when I get the novel, it's gonna be in the novel and everything along those lines. But I mean, we didn't see the car depicting Nickel Boss killing Nib Mizzet. You kind of dropped the ball on that one, guys, just a little bit. There's because you're not doing any sort of stories um, and on the site either, right? You're not going. You're not really giving us any fill-in stories to cover um, what we're not, what we don't already know is going on, and then wait for the actual novel to come out. And then anyone who wants to read it can read it online or go in the store and get it. I'm going to pick mine up in the store. I actually like reading a book in my hand sometimes. So, yeah, they just they just messed that up, in my opinion. But Nim Mizzet is five colors, six, six, dragon avatar, legendary creature, mythic rare, flying. When he enters the battlefield, reveal the top ten cards of your library. For each color pair, choose a card that's exactly those colors from among them. Put the chosen cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any random order. Now, I've heard a lot of people asking, how do you make this work? And admittedly, like, in a sealed format or something like that, like, I wouldn't use this guy in the pre-release, if I'm going to be honest. Unless I have a lot of, um, of the, like, walkers, like, dual-color walkers and of different colors, and I just say, screw it, I got this and a bunch of good double uh, dual-color walkers, I probably wouldn't use this uh, otherwise, However, I do have five color decks that do use a lot of color prints. For instance, I have a Theros Gods deck that uses pretty much every Theros God. Mine is Krufix, only because Krufix is pretty useless in most cases. Uh, and I like just a deck that's using all of them. His effects don't really matter. But I do. I, I have a deck that actually utilizes all color pairings and things along those lines. So, Niv is a great way to cycle through the top five, 10 cards in my deck, get god cards or other dual color cards I have, which I do have, and, yeah, put them into my hand and just put the rest on the bottom. Plus, he's a 6-6 six, six flyer for 5, so that's nice. Uh, ultimately, I do like it. Flavor, it's more like a flavor home uh, flo bleh, flavor home run, a flavor win. And his art just looks beast. Because I remember seeing the fuzzy art of it when it got leaked. I'm like, eh, whatever. It's like, it, it looks fine, like, visually, but whatever. But now I'm like, now seeing it legitimately, I, I, I'm actually, like, uh, very impressed by the art. Uh, we do have the Planeswalker deck Gideon that is spoiled. Uh, Gideon, the Oathsworn, is too white, four of any color, for a legendary Gideon Planeswalker. When you attack with two or more non-Gideon creatures, put a plus one counter on each of those creatures. He has four loyalty. You can plus two. Turn, until the end of turn, you can turn him into a 5-5 five, five soldier creature that's still a planeswalker. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to uh, this turn to him, basically. Wait. Yeah, be dealt to him this turn. Or minus nine, exile Gideon, Oathsworn, each creature your opponent controls. See, I heard a lot of people say that this gives them the impression that his ultimate is implying that he's going to end up sacrificing himself to protect a lot of people. And I will say this. I do think Gideon dies. I don't think Gideon makes it out of this. I don't think that's how he dies, if nothing else, due to desperate lunge that we'll get to. But Gideon's battle cry is two white, two of any color for a sorcery. Put a plus one counter on each creature you control. Search your library for a Gideon, uh, uh, or for, uh, excuse me, library or graveyard for a card named Gideon's uh, Oath Sworn and reveal put into your hand. Basically, it's the search card. And then you get Gideon's Company, which is one white, three of any color for a three, three. One second. Focus. There we go. A three, three. Human Soldier, uncommon. Whenever you gain life, such as Johnny's Pride Mate on steroids, put two plus one counters on this card. And then... 
uh, pay three and one white, put a loyalty counter on target Gideon Planeswalker. This is actually a really good card. It's already got the Johnny Primate ability on steroids. It's got a bigger body, it costs a bit more. But then factoring, you can pay and actually add, just, and without tapping him, just continually add pay mana and add it onto a Gideon Planeswalker. I, uh, yeah, uh, it's a it's a great card. However, we then also have Desperate Lunge, which depicts Gideon. One second. There we go. Uh, Desperate Lunge is one white, one of any color. Instant target creature gets plus two, plus two. Let me focus that in a bit there. Yeah, yeah, plus two, plus two, and gains flying till the end turn, you gain two life. A very solid card. It's actually a better Mighty Leap. But it's... So Ravnica held its breath as the hero of the Resistance, of their last hope, flew through the sky... Through the, yeah, flew through the sky, and dark... Uh, and his dark sword ready to strike a god. Look, assuming that even as a Planeswalker card... Or as to me, as a story card, this does take place maybe near the end. I highly doubt that's the kit. No, he's Gideon's not going to succeed in killing Bolas. I, I, I fully believe he's not going to succeed in killing Bolas. It's too easy. That's way too easy. Uh, and watch Bolas just snap the blade. He's like, blink. Yeah, you were going to kill me with this. That you're you're funny. Uh, God Eternal Ronas. Ronas. Two green, three of any color for a 5-5. Five, five. I forgot that Ronas actually had Death Touch. He didn't have Trample. The original Ronas. Uh, God, Joe, when he... Jeez, focus, Will, will you... Will you just focus, please? Uh, for some reason... Ah, oh, man. These are... Uh, for, for some reason today, the camera is having a bit more trouble focusing on the screen. Uh, anyway, when he enters the battlefield, double the power of each other creature you control until the end of turn, and those creatures gain vigilance until the end of turn. He's a 5-5. Five, five. He still has the... Um, uh, think think words here. He still has the... When he dies, rags out, return to third to uh, card top of your deck. He is scary. This guy will. This guy is going to end your games. Um... Uh, the, I, I, Ronas is my favorite, uh, god of the Amonkhet crew to begin with. Now, I need to look into some ruling, but if, can you have both standard Ronas and god eternal Ronas, uh, Ronas on the field at the same time? I don't think you, because I know you can't really have the same Niv-Mizzets on the field, if I'm mis not mistaken. But you can't, but I'm not certain this qualifies. I'm going to have to look into the ruling on that. But yeah, he's he's good. Is he better than the original Ronus? Um, I can't, I don't know if all, I, I will say this. Kefnit is all automatically better than the original Kefnit. Uh, because because the restrictions, that's the thing. I Part of the, me says yes, these ones being better than the original Amonkhet gods simply due to the fact that you don't need any. You have no restrictions for attacking or blocking this time. You don't. You don't have to activate them into attacking or blocking. But at the same time, they don't have indestructible. They instead have a pseudo indestructibility, which means they don't last as long. Which means they can die. They just come back later on. So I don't know. I. I will say this. At least Kefnet is better because Kefnet actually has a relevant ability. I mean, you even. Yeah. First off, he's five four flying. For four, two blue and two of any color, already go a good card. Can't die, so he's already got that advantage. And when you reveal the first card, you draw it each turn. As you draw it, whenever you reveal it, uh, if it's an instant or sorcery card, copy that card, and you may cast that copy. That copy costs two less to cast. So th this wouldn't be a card that would probably go in my god deck, only because he, I, I the god deck I have doesn't. Um, have instants or sorceries really or it does but just doesn't have enough that would really warrant it i would instead put this in some other decks that i have um definitely would uh, put there's definitely a couple decks i could use this guy in i like him though i mean if nothing else he has no downside to him he's a five four flying four so he has no downside at all uh final or finale is that finale or final no it's finale finale of promise two red x uh, sorcery rare. Now that, or excuse me, mythic rare. You may cast up to one target instant, and excuse me, you may, excuse me, up to yeah, up to one target instant of sorcery, and up to excuse me, instant, and up to one target sorcery 
from your graveyard. Each would convert a mana cost X or less without paying their mana cost. If you cast this card, uh, if you cast a card this way, uh, it would be put. It, it's it'd be exiled instead of going to the graveyard. And if X is ten or more, copy those spells twice. You may choose new targets for them. So, look, the copy spells have never been fantastic. Historically speaking, they have never been the best spells in the world. Focus, damn it. Um, most, most people are not big fans of them, and I don't really use the ones I have. I have a bunch of copies of different copy spells. I don't really use them. This is one that could be very relevant. Simply because you, you can easily get a lightning bolt back, and then whatever other like sorcery burn spell you want, and then play them again. There are big spells that we have in this set so far. We haven't even seen what the Elder spell actually does, but we know it's a multicolor card. So it is a spell, maybe a sorcery, maybe an instant, maybe an enchantment. If it's a, if it's one of those, you can immediately bring that back. And depending on how expensive it is, if you are late in the game on this card, you ca casting multiple copies of card, this card, this could be a sleeper card. I mean, it looks good Im immediately, but it could very well be a sleeper card. Uh, Pledge of Uni. Now, I'll admit, I don't know if this is says... Act 3 or 2 on there. I'll have to check that. It might be Act 3. Uh, Pledge Uni is 1 white, 1 green. Focus, damn it. 1 white, 1 green, 1 of any color. For an instant common, put a plus 1 counter on each creature you control and gain one well life for each creature you control. It's a good card. There's no, there's nothing wrong with this card whatsoever. Uh, Jace's Triumph is 1 blue, 2 of any color. Draw 2 cards. If you control Jace, draw 3 cards. You're drawing two cards for two and three in general. That's good. Draw three for three. That's beautiful. Firemind Vessel, four. The city more Niv's death, but he left behind the components for his rebirth. Enters tap, but you can add two mana of different colors to your mana pool. It's a good card. Art is great. This card will look fantastic as a foil. Um, so, yeah, it's a good card. Definitely a good card. Let's see. And we got still got a couple more cards left. Uh, we have... Toll of the Invasion. One black, two of any color, for a sorcery. Common. Target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose a non-land card, and they discard it, and then you amass one. Pretty standard ability. The fact that you get a body or you pump up something already on the field is still very good. Um, it, that's basically it. It's just a slightly better variant of that already existing ability. Centaur. Centaur. <laughs> Centaur. Nurturer. One green, three of any color, for a two, four. Centaur Druid. Enters the battlefield, you gain through life. You can tap and add one mana of any color. It's fine. You're gonna, you'll probably won't use it very often for the mana. You'll probably just play it, get three life, and keep it as a big butt, and then maybe use its mana ability to cast big things like Niv or something along those lines. Uh, con uh, contentious plan. I'm skipping over the other ones because the other ones have a bit more to say about them. Uh, Focus, man. Wow. I normally normally this will focus in pretty well, but for some reason it's not focusing in very well today. Uh, let's see here. There we go. There it's a bit more focus. Anyway, it it's sorcery speed. One blue, one of any color. Proliferate and draw a card. There is a card, I can't remember what it is. It was in Scars of Meriden that did this exact same thing. It may have been an instant. I can't remember. I'll have to double check. But it did the exact same thing, but for one extra mana, one extra color. So in that sense, if it's a sorcery. If that card was a sorcerer, I can't remember its name. This is immediately just a better version of that. Um, even if it was an instant, this is still arguably a better version of it. Uh, last but not least, we have Bond of Discipline and uh, Bond of Flourishing. Now, as cards, they're fine. Tap all creatures your opponent control. Yours gain for lifelink. For, four, for five mana, that's a bit much, but still fine. Bond of Flourishing. Pay one blue, green, one of any color. Look at the top three cards of your library, and you may reveal a permanent card from among them and put them into your hand. The rest on the bottom of your library in any order, you gain three life. That's that's a good card. That's a search. You don't lose any cards in your deck. You gain life. Uh, it's, it's just a solid card. But really, what's more interesting about this is the flavor behind it. Guilds actually teaming up, seeing their symbols, their guild marks merge together. Now, is this going to just be for the war or in the sequel book coming in the fall? Is it going to turn out that we are going to see the guilds merge the less into five different dual colored paired guilds and more into um, and more as 
three shard colored guilds. Because let's be clear, Selesnya and Simic make Bant. Uh, Orzov and Azorius make uh, Esper. So you'd have Grixis, uh, Naya, and um, uh, Jun that you still have to go do. Now, uh, I've heard people say, I, I had to think of it when I first saw it. Basically, the whatever the black, red, and um, blue bonds are going to be, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the blue is going to be Is it? The red is going to be uh, is going to be Is it and Demir? Uh, because here's the thing, they already have two blues here. That's the thing. You already have two guilds that have blue in them already depicted with Azorius and Simic. There's only two other blue guilds left, and that basically you could combine Golgari with say um, the Orza, the, the um, Demir. But then you're getting a Sultai color. You're not getting a, Grix a Grixis color. So, uh, and you could also combine like Gruul with say Is it? But then you're getting a Teamer color, or Gruul with um, no, or Gruul or Rakdos. John, but it's basically because you already have two here, and they both depict two guilds that have blue and two three guilds that have white. So actually, that's another thing right there. Three. It's already depicting three guilds with white in it. Uh, so the remaining gold of white Boros has to go into the Naya color, which means that means you're gonna have Gruul when Boros create a guild. You're gonna have Rakdos and uh, and uh, Golgari create a guild, or at least a bond. And you're gonna have Demir and Is it create a bond? Now again, is that gonna further on to new guilds the next time we visit Ravnica? Five main guilds, five shard guilds instead of like like almost like a new Alara. So. I don't know. I'd be interested to see. I love this from a flavor perspective. I love it from a flavor perspective. But anyway, that's my thoughts on that. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. As always, you want us to review something, put in the comments below. Let us know. I'll do a review of at some point. And ideas for who would win. Star Wars, Superior Magic, what if. Anything you do on the channel, put that in the comments below. Let me know. I'll get to that at some point. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Later.